When you're working on a screenplay, the rule of thumb is that one page of dialogue equals about one minute of actual movie time. So let's say you have a 90 page screenplay, you can safely assume that's going to be about a 90 minute movie, a traditional movie length. Well, when director Howard Hawks started production of His Girl Friday, the screenplay he was working with was 191 pages long. Now, if you use that rule of thumb of one page equals one minute, we're looking at a movie that would be about a little over three hours long. The thing is, His Girl Friday isn't three hours long. It's only about 90 minutes long. So how did Howard Hawks jam a three-hour movie into an hour and a half? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today here on A Million Movies. So stick around. Before we begin, I want to give you just a little bit of background. His Girl Friday was actually the second time the story had made it to the big screen. The story began as a play, a play called The Front Page that premiered in 1928. In 1931, Howard Hughes took the play and made a film version of it, also called The Front Page. And the 1931 version did really well. In fact, it was nominated for three Oscars, including Best Picture. So when Columbia Pictures comes to Howard Hawks, uh, and says, we want you to remake the front page, remake this Best Picture nominee from eight years earlier. Howard Hawks was less than thrilled about the idea. That was until one night when he had a dinner party. And during dinner, he started talking about how Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur, the two playwrights who had written the front page, were some of the best writers of modern dialogue around. Uh, and to give a demonstration of that, he had the, the group after dinner come back and he had them, we started reading some of the scenes from the play. Uh, the play is a, is a story of um, an editor and his reporter and it's written for two men. He knew one of the ladies at the dinner party was a decent actress and he asked her to read the reporter part and he would read the editor part. Again, just to show how great the dialogue was. As they're reading it though, Howard Hawks stops in mid-scene and just says, oh my gosh, this is it. He realized that when you make the characters a male and a female instead of two men, it adds a whole new dynamic to the story. With two men, you've got this, essentially it's a love story, uh, a platonic love story of uh, a seasoned pro and his cub reporter and, and they really care for each other and they want each other to do the best. But when you add in a male-female relationship, you keep that original sort of professional uh, relationship element there, but you add in a romantic element as well. And he knew that would make a much better picture. Now, director Howard Hawks was focused on the dialogue. He wanted these characters to sound like real people. And to do that, he was going to use a technique called overlapping dialogue. Hawks knew, just like you and I know, that when two people are talking, there's usually things that are happening that overlap the dialogue. They interrupt each other. The a person asking a question may be interrupted by someone answering it before they even get to the end of the question. Rarely are people polite enough to wait for person A to finish their sentence, then person B responds, and then person A responds to that. There's muddiness, there's, there's, there's conflict in the dialogue, and Hawks wanted that to be reflected in this movie. Oh, Walter, you're uh, wonderful in a loathsome sort of way. Now, will you please be quiet just long enough for me to tell you what I came up here to say? Have some lunch, and you I have a lunch date everything. already. Break I cannot break this. Will you take on. your hands off me? What are you playing, uh, osteopath? Temper, temper. Now, a lot of people think His Girl Friday was the first movie to have overlapping dialogue, and, and it's not. It's one of the first ones. It was definitely something that was unusual for the time. But other movies like uh, Frank Capra's 1932 movie, American Madness, had used overlapping dialogue, but not to the degree that Howard Hawks was going to do, use in His Girl Friday. Now, to get this effect, Hawks and screenwriter Charles Lederer loaded up the script with dialogue. They wanted lots of words for the actors to say. To give you an idea of what happened with this, uh, you look at a normal movie, and in, in a movie, uh, normal characters will say between 90 and maybe 150 words per minute. In His Girl Friday, there are scenes where you can hear 250 words per minute. That's super fast, lots of words coming through all at the same time. Not only was the script jam-packed with dialogue, but Hawks encouraged the actors to ad-lib, to improvise, uh, additional lines for the story. Now, Cary Grant had come out of vaudeville and he was used to being quick on his feet and thinking of fast, funny lines. 
uh, and a lot of his ad libs were inside jokes, particularly jokes about Hollywood. Uh, well, a classic one is one in the scene right after an escaped convict uh, is found in a desk. Whistling in the dark. Well, that isn't going to help you this time. You're through. Listen, the last man who said that to me was Archie Leach just a week before he cut his is throat. Is that so? The inside joke here is that Archie Leach is Cary Grant. Cary Grant was born Archibald Leach and changed his name to Cary Grant when he got into movies. Another great ad lib from Cary Grant is this scene. Hey, Benji, come here. There's a guy waiting in a taxi in front of the criminal courts building. His name is Bruce Baldwin. What does he look like? It looks like um, that fellow in the movies, you know, uh, Ralph Bellamy. Oh, him? Can he handle it? I've never flopped on you yet, have I? The inside joke there is that the actor that they're pointing to is Ralph Bellamy himself. Now, Rosalind Russell was not as good an ad-lib performer uh, as Cary Grant was. She didn't come out of vaudeville and she wasn't used to having to ad-lib. But after a couple of days on the set, she realized that his ad-libs and his sense of humor were stealing every scene. And if she wanted to be in this movie, she needed to come up with some ways to get some ad-libs of herself. So one day she actually threw her purse at Cary Grant. Howard Hawks loved it. Cary Grant added a line at the end of it. Uh, and they decided to keep it in the movie. Oh, you. Oh, you're losing your eye. You used to be at a bit better than that. Hello? Yeah? What? Sweetie? Rosalind Russell knew she needed to come up with more gags and ad-libs, uh, but she was really struggling coming up with those ideas. So she went out on her own and hired a private writer. Someone to help her out, look at the script, and give her ideas of things she could say or do uh, that would be funny for the story. Now, no one, Howard Hawks, no one on the cast or crew knew about it, but ultimately Cary Grant did figure out what she had done. And as she came to set every day, he would be waiting for her asking, what have you got for us today? From a technical perspective, this faster dialogue was a real challenge for the audio guys. These are the days before multi-track audio where you could just have all the mics input to a single mixing board and raise or lower the audio of each mic as you needed it they only had one input. They could have multiple mics, but if you wanted to switch between the mics, you had to do it manually at a control board. So what they do is they would set up the mics, and especially if you're doing a scene with a lot of people talking in it, and they would switch the which mic was being recorded based on the cues of what was happening in the scene. For His Girl Friday, that means some scenes they were making 35 switches of the audio track in a single scene. This fast dialogue is heard throughout His Girl Friday, with the exception of one scene. There's a scene where Rosalyn Russell is confronted by a convicted killer. And in that scene, the pacing and the dialogue slow down dramatically. And when you watch that scene in, in the context of the, of the whole movie, it's like someone put the brakes on the movie. And what it does is it creates a huge emotional impact for the audience. And more importantly, it separates this scene from the rest of the movie for the audience. One final aspect I wanted to, to talk about with, uh, with His Girl Friday was something I found myself doing the last time I watched this movie. And that was I spent more time watching the person not talking than the person talking. Both Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell are fantastic at being active listeners when they're in a scene. And if you watch this film again, divert your eyes a little bit, look at the person not talking and you will get so much more out of this movie. You can see their eye movement or things they're doing with their hands. Nothing that would distract you, nothing to try and steal a scene, but they add elements. You can see them scheming or thinking of alternatives or reacting like they totally don't believe something the other person is saying. Instead of being just wooden, they are really in the middle of the scene and it's just something so much fun to watch and so different than what you would normally see uh, from a lot of other actors. And if you love classic movies like I do, and you love His Girl Friday, uh, I want to invite you to take a look at the TCM Classic Film Festival. It's coming up in April, and His Girl Friday is going to be shown at this year's festival. So you'll get a chance to see this fantastic movie on the big screen the way it was intended to be seen. Uh, I got my pass this past weekend. I'm already excited, still several months away, um, but I'm already making my plans uh, and getting excited to go and see some of these fantastic movies and to meet people who are into classic movies as much as I am. So if you do end up going, uh, I hope you'll look for me. I'd love to say hello and find out a little bit more about the movies that you love. And with that, I want to thank you for watching A Million Movies and hopefully we'll see you again here soon.